Well, good morning, folks. We're uh, really blessed here this morning to have uh, caught Dick Van Grunzen of uh, Vans Aircraft at a lull between the crowds, and uh, we just had a couple of questions we wanted to ask him, and uh, just to get some of his wisdom and insight onto the direction of uh, sport aviation. Good morning, Dick. Well, good morning to you. Well, sir, uh, I am an RV builder and a lover of the design for a long period of time. Uh, I ordered my RV4 kit back in the late 80s. And I was uh, a leap of faith probably more than anyone because I was living overseas and I saw a sport aviation magazine that had a picture of an RV4 in there, total performance. And uh, for me, it was everything to be able to take off and land on a grass strip, go 180 miles an hour very easily, and, uh, and, and visit the places that I love to visit. And uh, to this day, I think that that, uh, that idea now has grown to over 6,000 aircraft, is that correct? Uh, approaching 7,000 completions as of today, yes. 7,000 completions. I'd say that's a success story within itself. Uh, probably no, unheard of in the in the aviation world. I think probably more than Cessna now, I think, our RVs are completed. No, no not, by, not by a long shot. Uh, I think we by far have the most uh, home builds of any company, but uh, nowhere as near some of the major companies, uh, production airplanes. What I wanted to ask you, you were instrumental in the, uh, in the LSA program, I think, in the ELSA, some of the thinking that was going on at the time, and the RV-12 that we're leaned up against here is evidence of uh, just a huge success story, I think, in that re regard. How are things going with the RV-12? Are you getting some good feedback from the guys that are building and flying them? Very good. Uh, actually, we were a little late to the game with this airplane uh, because of other projects that we had underway at the time the LSA uh, was first introduced but um, and this LSA is uh, a home built kit not a manufactured airplane like any of the SLSAs are so we're kind of in a little different league than um, a lot of the airplanes a lot of the LSAs that uh, you hear about that said um, it's going very well uh, we did not have the complete kit or the last segments of the kit available until last September or so and there are already almost 60 airplanes flying. Home belts are not necessarily completed overnight as you know uh, so we feel that this uh, indicates or shows uh, what we have been saying that uh, this is a very easy kit to build and that uh, just follow the instructions and you'll be flying before very long. So uh, basically it's been a, as successful as we could have hoped and we see here now there are say maybe a half dozen home-built RV-12 showed up and we have a, at least a half a dozen real good salesmen out there working for us now. Thank you, sir. Uh, real quick question. Uh, I've always thought, I, I thought I was really worked hard with my RV4 and keeping my costs down. I bought a used engine. Uh, my instruments weren't the best on the market at the time. They were just what I could afford. And I didn't even paint it for the first three years. And uh, I thought that that was, for me, that was a great capability to be able to build and finish an RV in a, in a fairly easy budget. But boy, the more and more I look on the web and I see some of these airplanes parked out here, the instrument panel is worth more than my house. <laughs> so I, uh, I just wondered, what, what would be some good advice that you would give to guys who are trying to get into the sport aviation world and keep their costs down and maybe look at some options they might think about? Well, getting into new aircraft, uh, of course, the home belt is the least expensive way to go because you don't charge yourself for your own labor where the factories have to. Um, there are certain unavoidable costs. It costs us a certain amount for materials and what have you to, to uh, produce a good kit. Engines are going to be expensive. We just have to face the fact. Uh, the areas in which a person can save money are the extras. And uh, the best advice there is uh, not only decide what your budget is, what you can actually afford, but what you're going to do with the airplane, what do you really need, what uh, to do, what the airplane is expected to, rather than uh, what do you want for the, from the wish book, cat, the uh, optional catalog. There, I've seen, as you've uh, just indicated, uh, a, a tendency to say, well, 
this is available, therefore I want it, I need it. And a lot of the what has become almost an expectation now is really an extra. And a person has to be very objective about that. And that's one way to help keep the cost down. And even into onto the finish of the airplane, paint jobs are expensive. And some of them you see here that people are just mooning about, is that the right word? Whatever, <laughs> ooing and eyeing, are very expensive paint jobs. It doesn't help the airplane at all. And uh, if you look at, well, some of the uh, of a more nice but basic paint that you might do yourself, uh, you can definitely, in, in many cases, do it yourself, save many thousand dollars. So again, uh, just a matter of being very honest with yourself and don't get, well, the, the candy store complex, I guess, and say, I want, I want, I want. Thank you, sir. I guess the last question I was going to ask, and uh, we promise to leave you alone, is uh, where do you think uh, sport aviation is going in the next five to ten years? What direction do you think uh, things might be going in the kit market and uh, maybe some of the other airplanes that are available out there? Well, I really don't know which way it's going. It's kind of scary at times uh, because the prices for new aircraft, even LSAs, are a little objectionable. What I hope is that people will kind of follow advice like I, I just mentioned, uh, be realistic about your real, what you really need, and uh, fly a, a more affordable airplane rather than just saying, well, I can't afford the wish list airplane, so I'll be, you know, happy with what I need, not what I want. The other is to consider the possibility of joint ownership, uh, partnerships, and so on, because most airplanes sit in the hangar a lot more than they fly, and it's better to have a third interest in an airplane than none at all. So I think if people uh, keep this in mind, uh, we should be able to get a lot more people involved. Maybe not at the ideal level they want to be, but certainly better than waiting on the, the sidelines for something miraculous to happen that probably won't. Well, thank you, sir. We really appreciate your time today, Dick, and uh, we wish you the greatest success. I personally do because both Sandy and I are building, uh, he's building an RV-8, and, of course, I just finished helping finish my dad's RV-6. So I'm, thank you very uh, much for that. I, my four is, uh, unfor I wish I could have kept it, but it's now still flying, success story, and I think it's still the greatest design out there thanks to you. And uh, with that, we'd say goodbye from Vans Aircraft here at uh, Oshkosh 2010, and thank Dick Van Grunsman for his time.